Hope everybody had a great weekend. It was delightful here, a little warm for this time of year. We're normally in the 70s, uh, but uh, we've been in the mid-80s and holding. In fact, uh, may even make 90 degrees on Wednesday before the next um, batch of Canadian air drifts south. Um, the western part of the United States in the long-term forecast uh, is supposed to come under the influence of El, El Nino, which tends to make the western part of the United States warm and uh, through the central part and farther south get more moisture which we will take and it tends to make the upper midwest uh, starting uh, eastern montana uh, all the way down through <coughs> the ohio valley back up into the northeast colder than normal so uh, the uh, long-term forecast based on El Nino and La Nina, which are not very expensive, generally yield uh, a certain type of weathering pattern. And they won't go into how much colder or how much warmer, but they're usually pretty accurate. So uh, we hope uh, that the moisture part of it is correct. Uh, over the weekend, <clears throat> riots in Hong Kong. Um, I, China, the last time there were riots in Hong Kong, cracked down pretty hard. They took away their uh, freely elected government. There was not blood in the streets, but they lost uh, their freely elected people, and they had hand-picked uh, officials that were allowed to run, which were picked by China. They weren't picked by uh, those that lived in Hong Kong. So <clears throat> my guess is we probably won't have blood in the streets in Hong Kong. But again, it's just another bit of unrest going through um, uh, the world. Every dictator, every power out there, I mean, they're going to grab what they can grab given the uh, leadership vacuum and the um, lack of such uh, from the West. Everybody, it's kind of fend and fend for yourself. You know, if you have the notion to grab, go ahead and grab. Uh, if you have the um, notion to uh uh, you know, take what you shouldn't take. Uh, you're going to do it. You got a two-year window now, uh, after November the 14th until uh, January of uh, 2017, to get what you can get. And uh, these people are not <laughs> resting on their laurels, so to speak. Uh, all of it tests the Western leadership. Uh, if I had signed a treaty with anybody, if you'd sign it with any of the NATO members or European members, uh, they don't have the wherewithal to fight a war or to back up the treaties. If you signed it with the United States, who does have that wherewithal, we don't have the will anymore. So um, if you were going to grab something, now's the time. Uh, crude oil's up a little bit um, and holding uh, from last week, holding those gains. Uh, gold was actually up. Uh, from Friday's close a little bit. So the unrest continues. Um, the news out of Liberia is that the uh, Western or the United States troops uh, on the ground in Liberia are getting off to a slow start. And they probably would. I've been, I spent a lot of time, relatively speaking, in Liberia, interesting country, a long, long time ago. And um, once you leave a uh, about four square blocks in uh, Monrovia. Uh, things, uh, as far as Western amenities go, go downhill in a hurry. Um, so the objective of the uh, Western force uh, in Liberia and the other countries where uh, Ebola is broken out is to contain those people that have it in their dwellings, let them not get out amongst the general population. And that takes boots on the ground uh, to make sure those people don't get up and move around. So uh, that's what where it'll be going. So the unrest in Hong Kong, I think, is probably the uh, biggest factor in the rally in the financials. Um, our market is sold. Uh, you'd have to relegate uh, Friday's strong rally to uh, short covering uh, end of the week. Uh, tomorrow's the end of the month, um, end of the quarter. Uh, I don't think you'll have a lot of heavy duty in selling in the stock market, uh, but it's not the end of the year. Uh, so it, it could happen. But Hong Kong is being blamed for that. So where are we in this market? Right, You can see in this area right in here, 
We've got some resistance, so this 23 to 27 will be sell one. And I think it really is down to which way the stock market's going to go today. And then sell two will be 31 to um, uh, the buck. On the buy side, uh, I'm going to make it 13 to 17. I, I see pretty good support down um, 12 to 16. But having said that, depending on where the first rotations go, we may have to move our buy area up to 16 to 20. I don't know. We'll just, uh, hopefully, um, stock market, the bottom won't fall out because of end of the month, end of the quarter. And five to nine will be buy two. Okay, as far as news goes today, we do have some personal income up three tenths. Personal spending where the focus will be plus five tenths and August usually brings back to school spending. So it's usually a pretty good month for personal spending. Uh, we've got pending home sales up eight tenths and the housing numbers, whether you believe them or not, have been stronger than forecast of late. So uh, maybe the real estate market is kicking in after the pool buying has stopped and then Dallas Fed at 10.3. So I, I think the focus is personal spending and then the direction of the ES. And right now the ES is selling. So that's it for the note. <clears throat> Basically see a range trade. We're going to lean against support uh, resistance and see what happens. If the E-mini continues to sell, you really don't want to be short uh, financials. Okay, the knob spread came off about 3.30 seconds over the weekend. Not a great deal, but it did sell. And uh, we're right at resistance up here. So the knob spread, if we break out and make new highs up here, could actually strengthen uh, just off of short covering alone. So uh, like the note. Based on Hong Kong, we're dealing with a P. Volume held. Volume is moving higher. Uh, we are at resistance, so 7 to 11. I mean, if you're a um, local, have a local's mindset, you know, this is resistance. I'm going to lean against it. If I'm wrong, I've lost two or three ticks. Uh, the breakout came at 29. Um, we have a new move there, so this 24.28. Going to be our first little band of support, and if the E mini stops selling, I think we're going to come back into our, to the range pretty quickly. Uh, the area I'm probably most interested in buying is this 17 to 21, so we'll put buy two out there. And that, again, that's just leaning against support. There's no magic there. Uh, the news focus will be the same. Direction of the uh, E mini, I think, is ultimately what decides today's overall direction. But the news out of Hong Kong in and of itself is supportive. Um, stock market sell um, on announcement of war or the impending war. And uh, you usually see gold and financials rally. I uh, usually see crude rally, too. But Again, I don't think anybody thinks that uh, anybody will go to go to war over Hong Kong. It's, um, I mean, if if I were a um, uh, somebody uh, living in any of these contested periods or where the uh, dictators are making their moves, I sure as hell wouldn't hold, be holding my breath. I'm <laughs> trying to make my personal situation as secure as possible. Okay, we can see right here that we really rejected prices above 28, uh, the first area. Top of value from Friday is 25, so 25, 28 will be cell 1. And then our 30, 33 will be cell 2. Uh, again, 
the best area to get short is where we've rejected these prices. This would be in this 30 area, plus or minus. And uh, on the buy side, um, I like our 15 to 17. It's treated us pretty well of late. And then we can see if the market is rejected prices below 8. We'll make our second buy to 12.10. Uh, again, if things get worse in Hong Kong, uh, if um, Russia, Ukraine, I think uh, is probably a little bit more germane for gold than the Middle East is, uh, then gold can take off. But I, I don't think you get you know, wholesale selling of, uh, selling of gold with all this unrest going on around the globe. It's just pretty hard to see anybody um, dumping their gold positions big time uh, outside of a large player or a central bank. And ironically, central banks, which knock the gold down but through intervention, usually buy gold or they're rumored or to be buying gold. Um, on those sharp breaks, especially if they're uh, uh, Chinese or Indian or Russian. Okay, uh, crude oil, uh, you can see that volume is moving its way higher. Uh, it basically held in the overnight. Uh, London's low came in in this 92.75 area, so 50 to 75 will be buy one. I mean, that is support. And then we'll make 92, 92 and a quarter, which is a more lucrative area in my mind to get long, basically against 92. Crude moves in two to three dollar increments. So uh, this 93.75, 94, that would give us, you know, pretty close to a two dollar move would be sell one. And then 94 and a quarter, 94.50, sell two. But uh, again, the drum beat of war uh, is probably more germane to the price of crude oil than um, anything else right now. Uh, the um, And uh, let me get this number written down here. Okay, the euro um, actually strengthened a little bit over the weekend, and the selling came back in. So right here on the euro, coming up off of its lows is. 2675 area, uh, give or take. We're at 2710. We've got this spill that came out of the 18 area. So getting stops above um, this little area right in here that you see that 20 to 30 area is pretty good resistance. So we'll make 20 to 30, sell one. I got no trouble getting short the euro. And then 45 to 55 for sell two. On the uh, buy side, uh, we've got our 75.85. I really uh, don't get too excited about getting long the euro. Uh, and then buy two will be 50 to 60. Okay, on to the most topical market that we talk about, the E-mini. Everybody's favorite player. I'm going to do a London split. Try to do a London split right here. So I think the, the most positive dynamic that we deal with is going to be end of month, end of quarter.
and that will probably keep some of the sellers out of the market. So because of this end of the month and a quarter tomorrow, I don't think we're going to see a lot of selling. So I, I really think that uh, we might find some buying down here in this 60-62 area. Just because of that, um, and then 55, 57 for buy two. Um, that's really the only reason I have for being long down here is this. Uh, on the sell side, we've got uh, we've rejected prices out of the 70 area. We're at 64, so we'll make 69, 71, sell one, and then 74, 76, sell two. Basically, leaning against resistance. Now, if the market sells today. Um, and that's the direction it's, it's uh, pointed in right now, then perhaps the sentiment has changed a little bit. But the selling uh, started in Asia. You can see it right here. Uh, that's Hong Kong's effect. Uh, Asia opens up in the A period. Uh, it continued in London. And then right before our day session is opened right uh, in the financials, it's selling too. Okay, personal income. It's usually not the focus, uh, but in the sense of how big it is, what the focus usually is is plus is personal spending because that goes right into the economy. Core PCE plus a tenth is supposedly the Fed's most favorite inflation measurement, pending home sales, uh, up 8 tenths. That's a big increase over where it has been, but the housing starts and permits and sales have been higher than forecast than Dallas Fed, which no one will pay any attention to, 10.3. The Texas economy is so vital to the growth, what growth we have had in the United States, right up through the center part of the United States, North Dakota down through Texas, because of energy and uh, uh, the energy prospects uh, for the central part of the United States remain pretty strong, pretty good. So that's what I have for right now. It'll take at least 15 minutes to get everything up and posted. I'll get busy on that right now, and I'll be back with you as soon as possible.